she runs or not, we know she's going to continue to fight with us and stand strong. I want to bring to the stage now and welcome Governor Sarah Palin. Unfortunately, and we can nip some of that in the bud right here, right now, because we've got a lot of work to do, constitutionalists. Our challenges today are too great. We simply don't have time to be bogged down in internal conflicts and friendly fire conflicts. The time to secure our future and preserve the blessings of liberty and restore our economy, it's now. The Tea Party movement is bigger than any one person, and it's not about any one candidate. And thank goodness we don't have any one single leader. The movement is about bringing together debate 
and discussion of solutions from we the people, not the politicos, not those inside the beltway type that are part of that permanent political class that have fought the Tea Party movement. As was said in the introduction, this is about everyday, hardworking individual Americans and empowering the individual. If this is what the founders intended for this country. It is you who run our factories and own our small businesses. You teach our children. You fight our wars. You who build our communities with a servant's heart. That's we the people. That is our country. That is America. America's hope is in you. It's not that nebulous, hopey, changey stuff we heard about in 2008, like one of the posters says over here. No, that's what has led us into the mess that we're in with tripling of the deficit and more crony capitalism than ever and more taxpayer bailouts and more of the left's big government agenda via that mother of all unfunded mandates called Obamacare. And for the first time in history, a credit rating downgrade that uh, happened because our president has no plan to tackle the politicians' self-induced debt and deficit problems. No, Obama's hope has changed us from a country of hope to one of anxiety. And we are at a tipping point. So I want to talk truthfully about where we are with failed policies and incompetent leadership, but more importantly, what we can do about it. And some of us saw this day coming. I explained in Iowa that it was three years ago that I spoke at the GOP convention and I asked America, that night of a speech, I asked America, when the cloud of rhetoric has passed, when the roar of the crowd fades away, what exactly is Barack Obama's plan? What does he actually seek to accomplish after he's done turning back the waters and healing the planet? The answer is to make government bigger, to take more of your money and give it to more special interests, and to give you more orders from Washington, and to reduce the strength of America in a dangerous world. I spoke of this, but back then, those were only words of warning, and um, the media sure wasn't asking those questions. The media sure didn't do its part in vetting candidate Obama. But now you have seen the proof yourself in President Obama. See, candidate Obama didn't have a record while in office, but President Obama certainly does, and that's why we're here today. <laughs> Failed, a failed policy, a failed economic policy, and proof of not having a plan in leading our country coming from our president. Earlier this summer, on one of the first legs of our One Nation bus tour, we stopped at a struggling business here in the Granite State, the Yankee Fisherman's Co-op in Seabrook. And there I heard firsthand yet another story of how these burdening federal regulations and high taxes are literally killing our small businesses and our jobs. The hard-working watermen and their families at that co-op, they weren't concerned about political labels and inside baseball political games that are played. They're concerned about massive government burdens that are choking their way of life. Their freedom to make a living on the water, as some of these families, like our own commercial fishing family, some of these families have been proudly doing this for generations and they, they just want to fish and responsibly harvest a natural resource to provide for their families, but that's all under attack now. It's tragic. Like these fishermen, we patriots should not focus on petty political squabbles and media game sound bites. The Tea Party has got to be focused on the broader, much more important goals of this movement. Replace Obama! Yeah. And return power back to free the people and grow this movement with
without compromising principles. Friends, the needed reform away from the good old boy politics as usual, it falls greatly on the Tea Party shoulders. Look how successful you have been. As much as the media would love to ignore the fact it was Tea Party Americans who won the November 2010 election. It was you who sent that new governing class to Washington, D.C. Granted, the political, uh, the permanent political class tried to co-opt them, and there's uh, ongoing challenges there, but uh, it was the Tea Party movement that shifted the entire fiscal debate in Washington, D.C. And now, we're seeing more and more folks realize the strength of this grassroots movement, and they're wanting to be involved. I say right on, better late than never, for some of these candidates especially, okay? You're converting them over, and you know why? Because you have truth and you have logic on your side. And when you have that on your side, you win. And you have the time-tested truths on your side truths that we believe in. We believe that the government that governs least governs best. We believe that it's the Constitution that is the perfect blueprint towards making us a more perfect union. by incurring more debt. And we're telling Washington, my kid is not your ATM. We believe that we are taxed enough already. And friends, we believe that freedom is a God-given right. Freedom is worth fighting for. Bottom line, I believe that God has shed his grace on thee, America, and we're not going to squander what it is that we've been blessed with. this movement to restore power to we the people because we have truth and we have logic on our side and now we have this record of success so let's grow let's convert more of them over you've already withstood the wrath and the disdain and the lies from the media and the permanent political class looking down on us mocking us making things up about us telling us to go to hell. You've already withstood that. We're still standing, right? You're here today, standing strong, committed to restoring all that's good about America. It's with a still spine that you are still standing. You're here today, standing tall, because you know what is at stake, and it's our children's future that is at stake. like Washington would just love for us to do, just kind of waiting for America to be transformed into something unrecognizable, just sort of going with the flow. Nah, it's like those Yankee fishermen. They watch where a fish is headed in the current. They know that only dead fish go with the flow. That's not us. those candidates in who are bold enough to take on the tough challenges caused by an out of touch, out of control centralized government and those who are humble enough to admit they need you and they've seen the light. They who are willing to confront the challenges that are resulting from Washington's failed policies and incompetent leadership namely crony capitalism, because that is the root that grows our economic problems. That's what grows this unsustainable, immoral debt. It is what causes housing market that's gone in the tank with 30% of our mortgages underwater. And unemployment numbers so high that some parts of our country, they haven't seen these numbers since the depths of the Great Depression.
Yes, our nation is at a tipping point. So let's invite candidates who refudiate the crony capitalism and the corporate welfare and the waste and the corrupt politics and the government bailouts for their buddies. We need to hear from them directly. And we need to hear from those who can do more than just talk because we tried that, didn't we, voters? Been there, done that with a candidate who can just talk but doesn't have any kind of record of accomplishment and success, successfully reforming those things that are wrong. What we need is we need people with a proven record of reform and who are willing to take on the tough challenges, to run into danger, if you will, not run away from it. We need a pro-growth agenda. rates and that realizing that is how we incentivize job creation. America needs an agenda that attracts industry here instead of continuing to chase industry off our shores. An agenda that doesn't pretend that a centralized government can successfully manipulate and plan our economy for us. Like your poster said over here, it, your poster that talks about the private sector can do anything, everything better than government can. That's just a given. That's a fundamental part of those time-tested truths. We need an agenda that allows robust domestic energy production, a true all-of-the-above approach to energy independence, and a robust, aggressive energy independent agenda. That's a real jobs plan, and that's the real stimulus that we've been waiting for. And that doesn't cost government a cent. Can you imagine that? A stimulus plan that actually helps dig us out of debt instead of digging us into debt. That's some of that economic fantasy that President Obama is engaged in. Things that just don't make sense. More stimulus when the first stimulus didn't work. Digging more debt. Trying to convince the people that that's how we're going to get out of debt. No, we need an agenda of government reform. And that takes courage and that takes honesty in our leaders. Not entrenched inside the Beltway politicians who just say what they think we want to hear. And see, that's who we have still running the show right now. We have a permanent political class led by an unvetted candidate who became our president and he has ramped up crony capitalism with his bailouts and his takeovers. And this permanent political class, they're busy looking out for their own interests and special interests. And that's the reason, reason that nothing ever really gets done for you in Washington. Do you ever ask yourself why nothing ever really is reformed? They talk about the problems, yet things keep getting worse. They talk about the debt problem, and yet they keep incurring more debt. They just gave themselves permission to incur more debt. They talk about the spending problem, and yet Obama keeps spending more. They talk about an out-of-control federal government, and yet Obama keeps growing more. Well, I say, we say enough is enough. And the message from Tea Party Americans is the status quo is no longer acceptable. We can't tolerate business as usual. We can't tolerate business as usual because 14 trillion dollars later we can't afford business as usual. Friends, our commitment to restoring what's right about America, free men and free markets, it's why the powers that be just do not like the Tea Party movement. You shine a spotlight on what the problems are, what the challenges are, and what the solutions are, and you demand results from your employees. And you know, those are the people that you elect to represent the will of the people. Those are your employees. If you're not satisfied with them, you fight. 
hero! Our insistence on returning power to the people is driving them crazy. And, you know, I warn you that the cynics, the elites, they're going to keep mocking you. They're going to keep making things up about the Tea Party movement and independent, conscientious Americans just concerned about protecting our Constitution and not letting our country go bankrupt. They're going to keep mocking you. But you know what? Throughout history, the cynics, the naysayers, they've always denounced those who have stood for truth and fought for what is right. When Abe Lincoln led, they mocked him and ridiculed him. It was the elites of his day saying that he was a clown, a hick, a fool who was unfit for office. But who has history redeemed? Not the naysayers, not the cynics. History is on the side of bold and courageous reform, and this movement is reform. interests of the permanent political class that got us into the mess that we're in. They can mock us, they can call us names, they can make things up, but they can't stop us. Let them laugh while we get about the business of saving our country. Our nation is facing this precipice. We have no time to just hunger down and kind of preach to the choir. Now really is the time to grow. And I'm encouraged seeing different candidates, different campaigns represented here. I think that's very important. Now is the time to grow this movement. We need to understand that there are more and more independent Americans who are looking for a place to hear and to be heard. And it's the Tea Party movement that can work with these independents to build up the ideas that work to get America back to work. And one way to do this more aggressively is to hear from candidates directly, not through the filter of the media. We've learned that lesson. That's why the Tea Party rallies and Tea Party events are so important. Friends, we are one nation, and this can be one movement, active in every last corner of this nation, to restore America and to replace Obama in 2012. in these coming months. Remember, the people's movement is not red America or blue America. It's red, white, and blue America. And we do have a lot of work to do, friends. The challenges before us, they can seem daunting, but we must not lose our optimistic spirit. It's with optimism that America has always come through throughout our history. And what a history it has been. Remember our founders declared that we were born the heirs of freedom. We are the sons and daughters of that greatest generation who stormed the beaches of Normandy and raised the flag at Iwo Jima. We made America the strongest, most free, most exceptional nation in the history of mankind. 